Okay, so here I have this uh, migration file and then one of the field is JSON. So, and why we have this one? Now, because the field video itself, I wanna store a lot of JSON information inside this field in our database column. So that's why I have defined this as uh, JSON, which is very different than like other string, integer, or timestamp, or text. Now, once you have defined uh, one of the database field as JSON, then there are other things that you need to take care. Now, this file, migration file, would create a database named lessons. And uh, for this database, I have a model, which is called lesson.php. Now, inside this, one of the other things you have to do like for example the video field you want to retrieve it as json and then once you post data in this field then you want to save it as json too so this is what you have to mention over here and after that one of the other thing that you should do if your if one of your field is json in migration file then you should also have set attribute now here we see that set video attribute in your case or in my case because the database field name is video so that's why I have to create a method that has video the keyword so we say set video attribute now if my field was audio or any other field then I would say set audio attribute so the idea is if your field name is video and you have to create a method in your model related model class and you have to have the method method name as set your field name and then attribute and you also have to know that it should start with capital V the naming is important and before this data the form being submitted into database table set video attribute would get called which means that whatever the data that's being passed from the form then it would be grabbed inside this value now we can prove that now inside this over here we are going to use dd and we're going to dump and die and post this okay so i'm going to open up my front end for this uh migration files over here now here I'm going to create a new form as I click on this I create a new form like as you can see over here if I click on this so a new form gets created so as I'm going to click on this actually it would be presented with a form like this and then I'm going to do a simple test Laravel application and then I'll select a course, a Laravel course, and I'm going to select a thumbnail. Now in this case, okay, now if we go ahead and check our network tab, so I'm going to hit this submit button and now inside this we'll see like that so we have this three field name thumbnail and URL actually they should be inside this video now what is this video like this video form that I was talking about over here so these are the values that are being passed now if you have one of the fields set as JSON then when you grab the value actually you are given something like this okay all right so in that case you have to call this JSON in code so whatever is coming from front end from here which is an array so you wanna convert it to JSON so that's why we call it JSON in code and then I just want to get the array values so that's why I say array values so I pass whatever is being coming from our front end and after that the whole thing which is this one over here the whole thing would get converted into JSON and then it would get submitted into the database so remember once you click a form submit button 
So it gets all the value and then set attribute gets triggered before being submitted into the database. This is one thing you have to know. And when you view the information on the front end, actually, you also have to retrieve the value from the database and you retrieve that as JSON and then you use this one to convert it to PHP object. So the idea is if one of your field is JSON, then you have to have two methods. One is set blah 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 attribute, which is your field name, and get blah 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 attribute, which is your field name over here. And inside this, you actually should make sure that you have JSON encode and JSON decode. And rest of this information, like how you do, it's all up to you and based on your application. So these two methods are the core idea for a JSON field. Hopefully it makes sense. Thank you.